Hello everyone. I'm here to talk about uh, a common practice, or a more common practice, uh, of the 1800s. Now, the term Swiss fake originated more or less in the time of Waltham. You know, Waltham was one of the first uh, successful watch companies in the U.S. And, yes, it was known as American Watch Company. It was Dennison, Howard, and Davis, things like that prior. And, you know, you also had companies such as E. Howard during this time frame. But it seemed that there were a lot of Swiss fakes who wanted to imitate Waltham more than anything else. So, what you have before you are four Waldem watches. Two of them are Swiss fakes. Two of them are legitimately Waldem watches. Now, this is different than the same watches you find later on that are labeled Swiss fakes as well. The ones that have the full plate movement. And then there's a plate screwed to over that with um, it's all sorts of words about being railroad approved or 23 jewel. And the cap jewels on the watch are basically glass and there's no jewel underneath them, no hole jewels. Those are a Swiss fake that came around later on. The naming used uh, after a certain period of time, after legislation went through, uh, was trying to imitate American company names. Uh, a good example is the Time Ball Special, which is trying to obviously imitate the Web C Ball Company and the Ball Watch, you know, railroad approved ball watches. Now, they looked nothing like a ball watch. They didn't say ball watch company on the dial. They said things like time ball special. They were trying to imitate, but trying to be just outside of the reaches of saying that they're outright faking. Now, in this case, these are outright fakes. So, we're going to start over with a real Waldem. This is an 1861 Waltham uh, P.S. Bartlett. See, the dial is marked correctly, American Watch Company. It's in a nice uh, phase coin silver case. Solid silver balance wheel. And like I said, it dates to about 1861. Serial 27064, key wind, key set. There's your typical phase coin mark case. And a legitimate Waltham P.S. Bartlett movement. Marked with the serial number, mark P.S. Bartlett down here. Uh, Waltham Mass. This is a, a, a relatively nice example of a Waltham P.S. Bartlett from 1861. Then we move over to this watch. This is a Swiss fake P.S. Bartlett. Now this isn't your typical Swiss fake when you look at it. Um, the watch is marked American Watch Company on the dial. They're even mimicking the curved wording for American Watch Company. The hands are correct for the period of time. Case is a coin silver case. And this one is again simply marked coin silver. No mention of a particular company or anything. More or less a generic silver case. And that is the movement. This is marked P.S. Bartlett, correctly spelled, but mentions the location as Roxbury, Mass. Uh, this is incorrect for this watch. There are a few other things that give it away that this is not a legitimate um, P.S. Bartlett. A couple of things to note. When you look at the jewels, you have the blued screws. But if you look at them closely, you'd find that the circle for the jewel setting is actually just inscribed in the plates 
and that the screws actually don't hold anything down. They don't, they just barely touch that line. So these aren't actually gold jewel settings. These aren't jewel settings at all. They're pressed in jewels with screws to, and a inscribed line to make them look like jewels. And that is one of the things that you can look for when you're looking to see if a watch is a Swiss fake. There's a few other differences. If you hold a legitimate Waltham P.S. Bartlett next to a Swiss fake, there is a difference in the gilding. This isn't by age. This isn't caused by age. This is a completely different gilding process. The Swiss used a different process than the Americans. Not 100%, but very much so enough to make them not look the same. Another thing to note is, yes, there are three screws holding the cap jewel on. But there's a very large outer metal jewel setting, whereas the wall of them is much more refined, raised. Still three screws holding it down, but not the same. The Swiss fake, in this case, is this is a, a, a much better example of a Swiss fake. Um, does a much better job of trying to mimic a Waltham. And yes, Waltham did exist in Roxbury, but this is definitely not the time frame. Serial number 225961, much later than 1861, by, uh, I'm betting, uh, I believe, if that number was legitimate, puts it around uh, the late 1860s to early 1870s. So this isn't one of those that was even correct. And if you look up the serial number in the Waltham database, you'd also find out that this isn't a correct setup for this watch either. Now, if you had both of these watches in front of each other, you would actually find the Waltham blued screws actually protrude into that, um, in, that on the Swiss fake is an inscribed mark onto the real jewel settings. So if you remove the screws from this watch for the jewel settings, you could actually remove the jewels and their settings. If you remove the screws from the jewel settings on this watch, you'd just be removing the screws. So, let's move on to another legitimate wall. And this one is an American watch company, Mark Dial. Nice silver case. This is a warranted coin silver case. Very much correct for the time period. This one is a Appleton and Tracy, serial number 98. 859. Production is roughly 1863-1864. Most likely 1864. This one has a gold balance wheel. This is a solid gold balance wheel. Um, it is uh, the, the hairspring holder is over this balance wheel in this case instead of under it. This is oversprung not undersprung. But you have a Appleton, Tracy watch. Uh, Appleton, Tracy and Co. You have your serial, and it mentions Waltham Mass. Everything's spelled correctly. Um, this one has two screws holding the jewel setting, but if you look at the other jewels and their settings, again, the screws actually do touch past the edge of the circle which means they are actually holding a jewel setting. Now, another thing to mention about jewel settings, sometimes you find a little peen mark, a little dimple, a little mark, that helps somebody orientate the jewel back into the plate exactly as it was when it was made. This little dimple is very hard to see on some watches, not on others. This one I can see a tiny little one below the screw to the left. It's just a little pin mark. So, real jewel settings 
usually sometimes have a mark that will indicate how it, you know it should be oriented orientated into the movement. So when somebody's taking it apart and putting it back together, they make sure they put things back in the correct order and in the right, exact same position. Again, example of a real American watch company, Waltham Watch. Now this one is the more entertaining of the Swiss fakes. This one is an attempt and a joke, and, and in a way. What you have is a case that has the AW Co. mark on the inside of the lid and the eagle. This is something you find on American Waltham watches. And the eagle mark is the same thing. This time, though, the dial is plain. This is the original dial. They didn't mark the dial on these. Sometimes you can find replacement dialed Walthams that don't have any marks on them. So that wouldn't be ultra unusual. Again, though, inside of the case lid has some very interesting marks in the back. Again, you have the American Watch Company mark, AW Co. You have the Eagle. Then you have a very unusual mark here, which is a crown over the number 13. Now, the crown over 18 is seen a lot of times for an 18 karat gold case, but this is a crown over 13, which doesn't make any sense. Then beyond that, you have the typical lion mark you'd find on sterling silver in England. So you have a very confused amount of marks here, but they're all marks that are trying to lend some sort of legitimacy to the silver of the case and this, that, and the other. That's where it's starting to get funny. English, possibly English, but the wrong number, and the American, you know, eagle mark that you find on some of the cases. So, where does it go from there? Well, it gets even better. Again, we are back to a P.S. Bartlett. But in this case, it's actually a P.S.J. Bartlett. And the Bartlett is spelled incorrectly. Instead of being B-A-R-T-L-E-T-T, -T, it is B-A-R-T-L-E-T. And they dropped off the extra T. You can also, if you were looking at it closely enough, see that that is actually hand engraved into the movement. The serial number 106958 is fictitious. And the even funnier part is the location. It does not say Waltham Mass. It says Waldham Mass. W-A-L-D-H-A-M. So it's a Waldham Mass P.J. Bartlett. Again, you have the uh, inscribed false jewel settings. Really aren't there. The screws hold nothing down. There are no little peen marks to indicate any orientation. This, again, is also that bright, light, gilt coloring. So this is, this is different. You know, in this case, it's undersprung instead of oversprung with a false uh, split balance. And what I mean by that is there's a cut in the balance wheel but it doesn't go all the way through. These screws, these timing screws, are technically not really functional either. So it's, it's, it's trying to falsify a split by metallic balance wheel with timing screws. In this case, it's really just a non-split brass washed with steel balance wheel with random screws put in an even spacing. This was kind of one of those that they were trying to move away to say, well, nowhere on here does it say P.S. Bartlett. It says P.J. Bartlett. Uh, it doesn't say it's in, from Waltham. It says Waldham. So they're trying to do a play on words to try to make you think, 
Well, if they got caught, they could say, well, no, no, no. So, you know, we weren't trying to copy them, even though it's obvious that they were. Trying to make a, a, a defense out of nothing, really. But that is another Swiss fake. So you have some of these floating around out there. But ones that this walled ham or the Swiss one where they actually try to spell everything correctly and make it look as legitimate as possible aren't necessarily as common as you might think. There are far fewer of those than there are of the legitimate watches. But they do have a value. Don't think just because it has the words Swiss fake means that it's junk. Some Swiss fakes were made just as well as an American watch. May not be exactly as good, but it's pretty close. I've seen some very high quality Swiss fakes. These have functional jewels. They have jeweling on both sides. Um, this one though actually is a 11, this is actually a 15 jewel. Um, but they're not low quality junk. There's also collectors who actually look for these kinds of Swiss fakes. The ones that are more legitimately trying to copy. So, when you're out there looking at your Waldhams and the early, you know, Waldham Keywine pocket watches, but where some of them aren't really Waldham, look for the telltale signs. The screws that don't actually hold down jewel setting. Marks on the case that are incorrect. Misspellings of words. You know, these are the things that will warn you. This is actually a fake. So before you pay $500 for a Civil War era Waltham pocket watch, make sure it really is a Waltham. <laughs>